Hi everyone, my name is Haley and I'm the Canadian crafter behind the foiled plan here on YouTube. In today's video, I am doing a DIY craft for my upcoming wedding. We are eloping in Vegas, which is super exciting. I went to Fabricland in my small town here and I got new satin ribbon. It was $11.53 and my plan for this is I'm gonna use my Cricut, cut a design using this glitter HTV, and this is Caesar glitter. So I'll cut the design out, and then we'll see what that looks like. And if I still feel like it needs a bit more sparkle, then I'm gonna add these rhinestones that are from Amazon. And I have those linked in my Amazon shop if you wanna look for those specific ones. The design is something that I hand lettered on my iPad and then I've sent the design over to my computer. If you need tutorials specifically about crickets and how to use them, I have other tutorials on that. So I'll just like motor through this and then we'll move on. So I am at the stage now where I'm going to cut this. So I've got the glossy shiny side down, that side up, and my design is mirrored on my computer. Just need to select my material, which is glitter. Okay, while this cuts, I am going to grab my weeding tool so that I'm ready to move on to the next step right away. This is already plugged in, but I'm going to turn on my Easy Press Mini. I could use my big heat press, but I'll be completely honest, I'm feeling a little bit lazy and that side of my craft room is a mess. So I don't want to move things to have to turn on my heat press. Anyways, okay, let's do this. The newest Cricut update, when you're cutting a project, the percentage of completeness, in my opinion, is never accurate. I don't know if you've experienced the same thing, but probably for the last like 45 seconds, I've been looking at the screen and it says it's 100% complete, but clearly it's not. One thing that I wish when it comes to the software is that it, was more accurate in that sense and then also had an actual like countdown timer. Like my silhouette, the program that I use for that, it actually tells you like down to the second how much time you have left. So if you need to, like if it's a really big cut, you can set a timer on your phone and then go and you know, put a load of laundry in and come back or whatever. Just not an option for this. Maybe in the future though. Okay, I'm gonna tiny my space and I'll be right back. to weed. I remember the first time I ever used glitter HTV. When I saw this carrier sheet and how much glitter was actually on it, I was so nervous that it was going to transfer onto what I was pressing, but it doesn't. All right. Got that all weeded. Now I'm gonna cut these apart and kind of figure out where I want them placed on the sash. Okay, so I've just folded this in half. I originally thought it was gonna be too much, but I wanna see kind of where it sits to actually determine how much I need to cut off, if any, to cut off this much. Okay, now I am going to grab my Easy Press mat and I'm gonna separate the pieces and we're gonna press. And I have this on the lowest setting and we'll see how that works. I'm gonna lay this on top again and press again. Now I'm going to add the date. Parchment again, and we'll press. Perfect, okay. So I've just lined these up so this edge and this edge are together properly. And I'm going to clean up this spot right here. I'm gonna grab my plastic ruler and my rotary edge blade and 
we're going to snip them off together and then I'm going to grab my lighter and we're going to make it so that the ends don't fray. This is why I did a little extra than what I wanted it to be so that I could make sure this was perfectly straight. Now, cross your fingers and toes that I don't mess this up. So this is what it looks like with just the glitter HTV. So you can definitely just stop here and leave it as this. I asked a couple friends and I asked Brady. I put some of these stones on just the misses part so you could see what it looked like with the rhinestones and without the rhinestones. And the general consensus was because we're going to Vegas, we gotta add the extra sparkle. So we're going to add the rhinestones on top. So we'll do one side and then leave it and then maybe like tomorrow or another day after this is Oh, actually, you know what? I haven't sewn these two sides together, so I can just ship this down and then I can do the stones on the date, which is on the back. That's what I'm going to do. And this is going to take a while. If you've added rhinestones to anything in the past, you know how painstakingly slow it can be. Anyways, uh, the adhesive that I'm using is E6000. If you have a hard time with like fumes and smells, this is maybe not the best option for you. It doesn't bother me. So this is what I use. I actually take this and then I have a bunch of little syringes that I fill up because it's to me it's just easier to control than using this whole thing but once this is done I'll just add more to it. I like to work in small sections so I'll do a little section of glue and then I'm going to use this tool here which comes in a kit. I got this on Amazon comes with four of the handles, they're all different colors, and then these are wax tips. So they are what picks up the rhinestones and they just screw on. And then this, you can put wax in the tip if you want to. I just kind of use it to move around adhesive. Let's get into it. And after I take a little bit off of there, I like pull the plunger back a little bit so the adhesive doesn't continue to kind of pour out. And you don't need a whole lot because once you place the rhinestones down, you don't want it to like seep out underneath. And I'm gonna bring this closer. And because these are brush letters, I'm gonna work with different sizes of stones. If you had letters that weren't different brush sizes, then I would say maybe you could do all the same. My style of adding rhinestones to things, it's not all like exactly the same. I like there to be variation. And I've just got, this is actually a glue gun mat from the dollar store. And I like to always have it nearby when I'm working with this type of adhesive or I'm doing some rhinestone work because it's easy to just wipe it off and then it peels right off afterwards. These trays are really great when you're working with rhinestones as well. I have them linked in my Amazon shop if you're interested in scooping some. They just make it really easy. Like you just give them a little shake and then the rhinestones end up exactly where they need to be. Adding rhinestones is definitely the most time consuming part of this entire project, but I definitely think it's worth it to add that extra bit of sparkle. So I just finished adding the rhinestones to the HTV and made sure to do it on the date, which was on the other side of the ribbon as well, or rather the what would be the backside of the sash. And uh, then a few days later, as you can tell by my nail change, uh, I came back after everything had cured and I overlapped the ends of the ribbon and I sewed about two inches on my sewing machine to connect them. And then I folded the two pieces where that seam uh, I just created was and I used my Easy Press Mini to just flatten that out. And then also the top of the sash that would sit on your shoulder, I also ironed that a little bit with my Easy Press Mini just to put that crease in there so that it sat nicely on my shoulder. I ended up wearing this sash out to breakfast the day after we got married. I was like, you know what? I'm only gonna do this once in my life, so might as well be extra. We went to Denny's and I had a blast. 
Um, there's also other DIY projects that I did for our adventures in Las Vegas. Uh, so if you want to check those out, I'll link those videos as well. I did some blinged glasses and that jacket that you see in the middle picture there. Um, yeah, so that, uh, that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you have a super awesome day and that's all I'm going to say. <laughs>